beautifuls, this is Aromi here and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. So we are here in the tunnels and Rod is telling us that they received a letter, a warning, which we obviously know where this eventually will lead. A letter. It said that three days from now the king will be judged and convicted. His crown will be given to one more worthy. I stare at Rod with slow understanding. Three days from now, but that date. 18th birthday. I continue to stare at Rod in disbelief. This cannot be a coincidence. But a new king? Do you think someone is specifically targeting my father? We all know that royals are always in danger. But this threat has made the king especially nervous. Are the witches involved in this? The silence that falls within the tunnels is heavy. They think there is a good chance that they must be. That's why the Order of Caldera has tightened security. We continue walking in silence. Eventually, Rod points at something ahead of us. Here we are. The dim light of the tunnel illuminates the arrested door that leads into the palace. Rod looks around warily while Watts and I quickly duck into the shadows of a column. The guards will be doing their rounds on the side soon. We need to hurry. Right. The hallways are thankfully quiet as we tra tra traverse them. Rod did a good job of scoping out of the out the times of patrol eventually reach my room i stop at the door to my room suddenly overrun by nostalgia it has been so long since i have been in my room is this emmy's room now no by the king's order your room has been untouched since you were cursed then what has become of this room i look at rod in shock as he studies the door into my room with a complicated expression on his face i think maids are sent here to dust occasionally but so otherwise everything should be just as it was before but why would the king keep the room as if, as it is if he does not remember me? I turn back to the door thoughtfully, then glance at Rod. We can handle the rest. You should leave before you draw any, <coughs> any unwanted attention. I do not want to get you in trouble. Don't worry. We will figure out a way back, way to get back to that passage without alerting anyone. What? You have changed. What do you mean by that? Rod, please don't do this right now, because I, I'm still not over you completely. You never w would have cared about someone else's safety before. Rod turns to leave before I can respond. Be careful. Thank you. My, my love for Rod is still, still, still there. Garla and I will stand outside. Make it quick. I nod at Jerry and Ferg, turning back to the door and turning the knob. I glance at Watts and he nods at me. I take a deep breath and open the door. Hello, bedroom. Rod told me that my room has been untouched since I left, but I was not expecting it to be like this. Nothing has changed. Not a thing out of place. There's not even a speck of dust on the dolls on my shelves. Ichiko? I'm confused as, see, as to why this room has been untouched. Certainly the king would have thought to do something else with it. Or in the very least, he would have not have maids coming in consistently to clean it. But I cannot let myself linger on the questions. I have no time for them. We came here to find Neverland and Tinkerbell. I look at Watts and nod. Let us start searching. I thought I knew where it was. I said it was in a drawer. <laughs> Time passes, but I am only able to find the key. The box is nowhere to be found. Not even the drawer that I remember putting it in. Isn't it under a bed? To think that you had Neverland and Tinkerbell this whole time. Have, have you tried searching for it in my room before? I have, but I didn't find anything. She must have used the glamour magic to hide it from me. I stare at the key with frustration. Found Tinkerbell. I don't understand. I'm sure it was here. Are you sure you didn't throw it away? No, I would never throw away such a beautiful box. Besides, I keep most of my things. They keep most of my things. They are all valuable to me, even if they are not outwardly beautiful. I would have believed you if I hadn't seen this. He leans down to pluck a puppet from one of my drawers. He holds it up with a smile, and I feel my cheeks heat in embarrassment. Oh, that's cute. It's really cute. I just I never remember to throw. Throw that out. What's gazes at me thoughtfully? That's the only reason. Well, I look at the puppet in his hands and find the truth spilling out of me. I was never able to put my finger on why, but I have always liked that puppet. His smile stretches across his Walt's face. I kept it even though I did such a bad job with sewing. What? You made this? Yeah, this is the first puppet I ever made. Waltz turns the puppet in his hand, looking down on it fondly before his eyes meet mine. You were the one who taught me how to sew in the first place, you know. What? I was the one who taught him how to sew? I stare at the puppet. I probably kept it because you made it. How cruel. Huh? Do you have any idea what you're doing to my poor heart? No, please tell me. 
You seem perfectly fine to me. Watch. <laughs> Watch shakes his head and sighs. Waltz? So dense. What? Oh, he does love us. He do love me? Tell me. Because I'm stupid. <laughs> but now it begins to turn. Watts and I exchange glances before we both dart to different hiding places. I hide myself under the bed and he runs behind the curtains, which more easily conceal his smaller body. The king, what is he doing here? When the king steps inside, I notice that there is something in his hands. The box! He had the box all along? That's the box. Why does he have it? I look at Watson and he gives me a small nod, affirming that it is indeed Neverland. It was there. Show yourself now if you don't want to get hurt. Uh, oh, wow. He has a sword on him. Okay. The king unsheaths his sword. What should we do? I look at Watts who signals me to stay in place. He mouths something, and I think he might be saying that he means to find a way to get us out. Is Watts going to sacrifice himself again? Will he be alright? I kind of want to reveal myself, though. Oh, gosh. Um... <laughs> no, I cannot let him sacrifice himself again for my sake. Before Watts can react, I slide out of my hiding place and stand in front of the king. The king's eyes widen as he looks at me. You're that girl from the gates. You remember me. It is more like I find it impossible to forget you. What? You have someone else here with you, don't you? My mind races as I try to think of what to do next, but Walt suddenly steps up from behind the curtains and bows. It's been a while, your majesty. Walt? Wait, he remembers Walt? I remember then that Walt had worked for Mother, so naturally the king would know who he is. You haven't changed at all. <laughs> that, is the, uh, that is unfortunately the case. The king's expression twists, sadness appearing in his eyes. I'm sorry, Walt, what happened to you is... There is no need to apologize, your majesty. I did the things I did in the past, knowing the possible consequences. What are they talking about? I have a lot of questions for the two of you, but the most important is why are you both in this room? Regardless of the fact that I know you, Walt, you have still broken into the palace. We would not have done it if we did not have to. I steal myself for further scolding when the king turns to look at me. That box you are holding, we needed to break Walt's curse. How did you come to have it, your majesty? The king looks down at the box, as if only noticing it for the first time. I... I was in this room the other day, and I noticed a chip on the side of the box. I took it to get it fixed. A chip. I did drop it once... <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I did drop it once a while back, but did not think to get it fixed myself. Why would you do that? The king looks around the room, a faraway look in his eyes. This room is special to me, though I do not know why. I feel like this room and I are both waiting for someone to return, and everything must be perfect for when they do. I feel- Oh my gosh, Dad. I feel my chest tighten as, even as the king huffs out a diverse- A d derise, der, derisive laugh? What am I saying? He cannot miss me when he does not remember me. He can't. Right? But if this box is all that you're, you require, Watts, you may have it. It's the least I can do after all that you have done for us. The king holds out the box to Walt, who reaches out to take it. Thank you, your majesty. Look who we have here. It's a Varg. Please leave. We all freeze at the sound of the new voice. I turn and find an all-too-familiar figure leaning against the doorway, a mischievous grin on his face. Look who it is. <coughs> what a sweet little reunion. Varg? Oh, chapter 6. Betrayals. Uh-oh. I don't like the sound of that. Varg! I told you I'd come back for you, didn't I? Technically, I came to- Hello? Varg taps his cane to the floor, creating a shockwave of powerful energy that blasts all across the room. The impact of the magic forces me against the wall. I collapse to my knees, pain, pain thrumming in my head. The king collapses somewhere nearby, and I hear the crack of the box as it lands on the ground a few feet away from us. Gosh darn it, he just got it fixed! Well, it holds out his hand, I, ta I take it, and he helps me back to my feet. Michiko, are you alright? Yes, where's the box, dude? Michiko? The king looks at me quizzically, but his gaze does not linger. He looks toward Varg, his eyes narrowed. The king will remember who I was. Your majesty, are you hurt? The king shakes his head at Walt, so before turning his attention to Varg, his eyebrows furrowed. Who is this man? Your majesty, this person is working for the wicked witches. What? Wait, what happened to Jorin and Garland? They were just outside the door. 
What did they do to them? What, what did you do to them? Sorry. Mark cocks his head to the side. Who? The guards just outside this door. I'm sure they must have hid themselves when they saw the king coming to this room, but they still should have been able to see Bard coming. Guards, I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about, princess. Bard seems like he's telling the truth, but I cannot trust him. Please let them be safe. I say never land a few feet from us. I can try to grab it, Varg, but Varg will probably thwart my attempt with magic. I have to wait for an opening. I'll distract him while I do that. Oh, while I do that, the both of you need to run. What? I eye Varg. He looks at the three of us with his lips slightly quirked, as if he is amused. This isn't the time to argue with me, Michiko. Um, I've done a lot of arguing with you. I'm saying. <laughs> no. Michiko, we must prioritize the king's safety. I will help you. I do not know how, but I must do something. But we are in this together, Waltz. I am not going to run away while you sacrifice yourself for us. Waltz's disapproval is clearly written on his face, but he eventually sighs out, seeming to let it go. Haha. <laughs> right. You are too stubborn for your own good. So I've been told. I turn to the king and place a hand on his shoulder. Your Majesty, leave this to us. You have to escape somewhere safe. This does not involve the king. It is me that Bark wants after all. The king shakes his head as he removes my hand from his shoulder. He stands up and moves in front of us before pulling his sword from his sheath. Your Majesty, what kind of king would I be if I stood back and allowed two children to protect me? Twelve isn't a child. Or he looks amused by our conversation. You know that I'm not letting you get away this time, princess. It doesn't matter who stands in my way. Father... Oh, father. I'm yelling out father? Oh my gosh, what? Father, his cane is enchanted. You cannot hold him with just a blade. Father? I... I'm at a loss for words. It's been a long time since I called him that. Much to my surprise, the king slipped pole into a soft smile. You said that at the gates that one day, when you were seeking an audience... When you were seeking an audience with me, I've not been able to forget that day. Before I can say anything in return, a familiarly smooth voice breaks the ensuing silence. Oh... I wonder where all these voices are coming from. <sighs> A familiar man steps into the doorway. He inspects everyone in the room quietly. Mithras! Your Majesty? Quickly, summon the knights. We have an intruder in the palace. He gestures at Varg, who looks unperturbed. An intruder, you say? Sir Mithras turns to Varg. At first, his expression is impassive, but then slowly his lips begin to edge into a sly smile. You're such a ruffian, Varg. Look at all of this property destruction. I can only gape at Sir Mithras in shock. If he knows Varg, then he must most certainly affiliate with the witches. He is the witch. You know this man. Explain yourself, Mithras. We are all thrown off guard if I'm Sir Mithras is laughing. See, well, this is all happening. I would have picked up that box by now. <laughs> Soon his laugh becomes a mad cackle. There's a strange brightness in his eyes that sends shiver down my spine. My apologies, your majesty. I'm just amused at my servant's atrocious behavior. At ease, Varg. Sir Mithras gestures at Varg, a silent command to lower his cane. Varg obeys him before moving to a corner of the room and leaning against the wall with disinterest. Don't worry, your majesty. You're not the only one we're after. What? Sir Mithras turned his sly smile on me, and I inst instinctively take a step back. The princess is the lady we need to escort. Escort? Princess? This girl is a princess? That is correct. It is a shame you can't remember your own daughter, even though she stands right in front of you. <laughs> Enough with your vagueness. Explain yourself. The king's grip on the hit of his sword tightens. I'm not obliged to t explain everything to you. Try thinking on your own for a change, Your Majesty. Oh. Mithras, that was low. <laughs> Sir Mithras ignores the king's outburst and turns his attention to Waltz. He visibly stiffens and his sly smile contorts into a grimace. And look what we have here. I see that the traitor has returned to the palace. Oh, right. Waltz stares at him, looking puzzled. Sir Mithras tilts his head to the side and offers Waltz a lopsided smile. You still look the same as you did back then. I did not think it was possible for you to grow any weaker. Waltz Cresswell. Oh, that's a pretty name you have, Waltz. Mithras, I see. Waltz suddenly looks melancholy and he stares at Sir Mithras. Waltz, what is going on? This man's real name is Myth and he is a witch. Same as me. It appears that he has been using a powerful glamour to conceal his real identity. If I hadn't been cursed, I would have been able to tell right away. 
I would not give yourself so much credit, Cresswell. Well, it's narrows his eyes but says nothing. I glance between the two of them, confused. But how do you know him? He secretly worked for your mother, practically worshipping her. Or worshipped her. I was the only other person who knew of his existence as a witch outside of the Tenebrarum Barrier. A witch? I trusted you, Mithras. The king says the words through gritted teeth, his face contorted in anger. Sir Mithras flicks the wrist. It is a dismissive gesture and he still looks amused. What a hypocrite you are, your majesty. He eyes waltz. You're willing to play nice with some witches, but not others. This bias is, a, is what drove us witches to madness in the first place. Sir Mithras faces the king with a grim, grin. Sorry. You human hypocrites are so easy to manipulate. It's pathetic. Mithras! The king charges towards Sir Mithras with his sword held high. Your majesty, don't. He's, 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 oh, magic! King's sword never touches Sir Mithras. Sir Mithras only has to hold out his hand and suddenly an invisible force pushes the king back. Oh, I thought that was Walt's magic because it was green. Because his gem over here on the right was green. But it's myth. He crashes into one of my shelves, knocking down my dolls. Majesty! I quickly run to his side to help him up. Thankfully, he does not seem to have any major wounds. To think there was a witch working in the palace the whole time. Not the good kind of witch either. I was too careless. Rejoice, your majesty. I still have more surprises for you. I will not forgive this betrayal, Mithras. Betrayal? I'm afraid you have been played for a fool this entire time, your majesty. My loyalty has always been reversed for Lady Hildire and no one else. Myth, I can't imagine what you would hope to gain from all this. Hildire is long gone. So Mithras's eyes flash as he turns a severe gla glare on Waltz. His voice is seething with venom when he speaks. Had it not been for you, traitor, she would still be here. The king mentioned Waltz's betrayal. Sir Mithras called him a traitor. What exactly did Waltz do? Sir Mithras beckons, on, beckons before with a gesture of his hand. Now if you please, princess, come with us if you don't want them to get hurt. What? Waltz immediately stands in front of me. I won't let you take her. In your current form, you can don't stand a chance. I will make certain that you never break your curse, Waltz. This whole thing was a setup, a trap. I'm sorry, Waltz, this was my fault. No, it was mine. The reason we came was to break my curse. My eyes once again flip to the box on the floor. Neverland is just a few steps away from me. Neverland? <laughs> Walt's eyes follow mine to the box. He leans back and whispers to me. You have to get the box and break my curse. I feel for the key inside of my pocket. If Walt's true magic is indeed sealed in that box, then releasing it might give us a chance at victory. And Mithras and Varg do not seem to have caught onto the fact that the object that will break Waltz's curse is right at their feet. Okay. <coughs> the king moves to stand beside Waltz and draws the sword again, his body a shield. Your Majesty, I will not let you take this girl. You will not. Ha you have to go through me first. You can't do this. Ichiko, I've always loved that name. I thought if I ever had a daughter, I would give her that name. Oh my god. Magic makes even the impossible possible. You must truly be my daughter, yes? Tears start to blur my vision. Oh, how disgustingly touching. <laughs> it seems as if I would just have to deal with you first. No, wait, what? I rush toward the box at the same time, same moment Mithras casts a spell. Bark lunges toward me, his hand reaching for me, but he is too late. By the time he grabs me, I have already inserted the key into Neverland. I give it one definite twist and hear the click of the box as it opens as, as it pops open. White flashes through the room, blinding me. Suddenly I feel a strong arm around me, holding me tightly, protectively. When I open my eyes, it is Watts I see. Even several years older, I still recognize him. Oh sweet. Oh my god, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. I can't. I can't, he is too beautiful for my eyes. <laughs> Waltz? Hey there, little star. Oh, that's so cute. That's a cute nickname. Seems like the tide has turned, Myth. That's amazing how his curse just breaks like that. Okay. Waltz grins and I see a confidence in his expression that I have never seen before. Sir Mithras frowns. Sir Mithras's frown has only become more severe. Fool! I will show you that I was favorite I was a favorite apprentice. Be careful not to hurt the princess anymore, Mithras. Varg's voice is almost teasing, but Sir Mithras does not seem to care. I didn't plan on it. Sir Mithras gestures his hand in a sweeping gesture, the beginnings of a spell gathering at his fingertips. Waltz looks at me and smiles reassuringly. 
Now when I say that I can protect you, Michiko, I definitely can. Ooh, pretty magic! <laughs> Waltz holds out his hand just before some red thrust magic reaches uh, <coughs> us. An invisible barrier suddenly appears in front of us, thwarting Sir Mithras's magic. Seems like I'm not as rusty as I thought it would be. Waltz snaps his finger and effortlessly creates a dark wave that pushes both Sir Mithras and Fargus into the wall. Ugh! Let's go! Oh, it's so weird seeing him so grown up now. Well, correctly, his age. Now, what do we do now? The Order of Caldera. They are sworn to an oath of protection. We can rely on them. Waltz glances down the hallway, his mouth drawn into in a tight line. I see clear su suspicion in his eyes. I look back at the king. The knights should have been here by now. Surely such a commotion should have brought them running. Now I know why Waltz is staring down the hallway. He is searching for the knights that are meant to pass through here. There is no possible way they did not hear the skirmish in my room. Three of us push onward. I stand between the king and Watts waiting. Where's Garland Jurian? I'm not entirely sure what I'm waiting for, but I can feel a tension in the air. We only stop moving when a voice cuts through the silence. Your Majesty! Oh, it's Sir Alcaster, hello! <coughs> Sir Alcaster stalls for us with a group of knights. His face is impassive at best. Watts takes a step back as Sir Alcaster looks to the king. The king is quiet for a few moments, his eyebrows drawn together in a terse expression. He finally speaks. I'm about to declare a state of emergency. Where have you been? Seize them. Excuse me? My eyes are still on the knights in front of us when I hear footsteps from behind us. I am nonplussed when a dozen knights appear from the shadows and surround us. I look for Fritz in the cluster of knights, but he's not there. The knights, uh, the king stares, stares around him, baffled. What is the meaning of this? Could this be the reason why? What is happening? That voice. We all turn to watch the dining room doors open. Ophelia enters with Emmy and Rod. Oh, now we're all quartered together as a family. This is great. <laughs> Several knights tra tra trail behind and flank them on either side, giving them no room for escape. Rod notices me and stares in shock, but says nothing. Gennaro? 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 <laughs> the moment she sees the king, she calls his name and attempts to run toward him. The knights only need to raise their swords and block her path to stop her. I think that takes care of all the intruders. Though I'm not happy that two managed to escape. Two, Jura and Garland. If they managed to escape, they might be able to get the reinforcements. The king will be judged or convicted. His crown will be given to one more worthy. <coughs> I see. It was you who sent that letter, Alcaster. <coughs> that is correct. Now, if you want to protect your family, you will hand over your crown. He is not wearing one, so he has nothing to hand over, sir. The king shakes with rage. Was this yours or Mithras's plan all along? To take down this kingdom at its heart? Sir Alcazar snorts and crosses his arm. Do not clump me together with that snake. Both of us have different goals. It just so happens that we both needed to be rid of you. What? You are a weak king, Gennaro. The kingdom of Angeli needs someone who will rule with an iron fist. You are too soft, and so your subjects have become too dependent on the kingdom. And how do you propose I run my kingdom? By instilling fear. There is no place for fear in this kingdom. It's a ruler's obligation to assuage, assuage, assuage <laughs> the fears of his people. I cannot believe that you would do this, Sir Alcaster. Alcaster looks at me with disinterest. You Chico, correct? I have no business with you, but I suppose Mithras does. We have him back into a corner. What do we do? Um, well, it's, it's a wizard. Uh, not wizard. <laughs> Which here? I feel from my pocket, my hand touching the smooth surface of a vial. Ow! I bit my, che I bit the inside of my cheek. I can still remember the potion that Parfait gave me before we left. I had forgotten I had this with me. Parfait told me to use a potion if we find ourselves in a difficult situation. She said it would give us time to escape. She did not even tell me what it does. Do I drink it or do I throw it on the ground? I don't understand. Then said Watts, who is eyeing the knights quietly, but. It is also possible that Watts would be able to do something about the situation with his magic. Uh, I think Watts is rusty, so use Parfait's potion. <laughs> I reach into my pocket and slip the vial out. I open my fingers just long enough for Watts to see it. He gives me a subtle nod before turning his attention to Sir Alcaster, who is still speaking with the king. I will make you regret your actions, Sir Alcaster. I throw the vial to the floor. The moment it shatters, a blinding white light envelops the room, forcing my eyes to close. Waltz grabs my hand and pulls me away. Don't let-
let them escape. Uh, t too bad, buddy. We're leaving. I hear a few grunts from the knights as Waltz begins to barrel his way through them. Um, then we got the king and every everybody else. Waltz leads me into the throne room. We have all somehow made it out. Rod stands in between Ophelia and Emmy. Rod must have, b have pretty good eyes to be able to lead them both out of there in all that chaos. Good job back there, Michiko. I never realized you had a potion. Our fae gave it to me before she left on her urgent meeting. Hey, so smart. It's a good thing then. You saved me by using it, you know. Using a more complicated spell would have drained my energy. Why is this happening? Emmy's <laughs> eyes are filled with tears. Ophelia takes her into her arms and rubs her back in an effort to calm her. This is my fault. How could I have not foreseen this? Tyrion was right about him. I should have listened to her. This is not your fault, your majesty. We don't have much time. We need to escape until Lady Parfait about this. It sounds like Jiren and Garland were able to escape. If it is possible, they will soon bring in reinforcements. Rod, you know these people? <laughs> That's right. Rod is silent for a few moments before nodding at her. Yes, they're my friends. <laughs> okay, in this route, I'll be your friend. Friends. <laughs> Apparently. Hold on, I need to take a drink. Oh my gosh. Rod just shrugs at me. More than likely, he just wants us to play along. Waltz paces the room. His arms crossed as he tries to think of something. Waltz? I haven't done this in a long time, but I can try to open a portal that leads back to the margin. Witches can do that. Only the most practiced witches. It only works if they have a clear image of where they want to go. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm going to imagine my bedroom every time I'm at work. <laughs> so you can do it. I can. I was taught by your mother, after all. Oh, I was wondering why, why was there a random blank silence? Walt well, starts waving his hand in front of him as he conjures a spell to open the portal. The portal disappears as soon as it appears and then and fades again. Damn it! They're coming, Walt. I'm doing my best, princess. Yeah, I can't. I can't brush him. He just got his actual body back, so I don't think his powers are ready to be used. Waltz tries to cast a spell again. This time the opening appears and stays. I did it! But this won't be, but this won't be open for long. Your majesty, you must go first. No, let Ophelia and the children go first. Waltz nods as he ushers Ophelia and Emmy into the portal. Though Rod is reluctant to step inside, I force him into the portal before me. I can't keep the portal open for much longer. Michiko, I can manage one more person before I need to recast it. Your majesty, you must go. No! What? I do not have any intention of leaving. To leave this place is to abandon my kingdom. I will not flee like a coward. I will protect my throne until my last breath. But that will be suicide. He will not kill me. He may have managed to sway the order, but I have the people on my side. Killing me will cause an uprising, and that is the last thing he will want. But if the king escaped, he will be able to fight from the outside. The castle and his crowns are symbols. He is in danger if he stays here alone. I glance at Waltz and notice him paling. I can tell the magic is sapping his strength, making him weaker. I bump my hands into fists. I cannot leave the king here by himself. He is the king, and I am the crown princess. Waltz, you will come back for me, right? What are you? <coughs> push him in. <laughs> Before I can react, I put my hands on his back and push with all the strength I can muster. Waltz stares at me in horror as he falls into his portal. I'm sorry. Waltz disappears and the portal collapses in on itself, leaving me with the king. Wow, I am such a beautiful person. <laughs> like, my character, holy crap. Both my mind and heart are numb as knights approach, ready to surround us. What are we doing? I have no idea. The king and I sit on the floor with our hands tied behind our backs. There are two knights standing by the door to watch over us. I look at the king who remains as quiet and solemn as before. He has been so calm, did he have a plan? Why is it that you chose to stay with me? I'm surprised when he finally breaks the silence. Because there are questions I need answers to. Besides, I cannot just leave you here. I I have many things I need to ask you. King Gennaro falls silent as he stares at me. The cold of his eyes clearly reflects my own. I had never realized how similar our eyes were. Is it true? Are you really my daughter? Yes, I was given the fairy tale curse and turned into a peasant. My title was stolen from me and from the minds of the people. No one remembers who I am anymore. Cinderella. How did you know? I've noticed a glass slipper necklace on your neck, but the other slipper seems to be missing a piece. A piece? 
Did I get another piece? I look down and stare at the second slipper. My eyes widen when I notice that the piece is bigger. Oh, snap. I guess that was a good deed. But when did this happen? Yeah, it didn't happen very notici noticeably. But that's going to be it for today's episode. This is... This is... I don't... Hmm. Rod is still number one right now, but Watts is number two currently. I'm trying... I'm praying maybe Waltz can outdo Rod's route, just because I'm I'm wondering why did they keep Waltz and Fritz's route locked? Because if usually if you lock a route, that means like they're super important, right? Or something about their storyline is super important to make it locked. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.